Dr. Rex Hamilton here, Hamilton Eye Institute. I am so fortunate to have Nikki with me today. Now, I am fortunate to be sitting with you with my now perfect eyes. <laughs> That's awesome. But Nikki, why don't we start by you telling us like what made you come in to try and do something about your vision? So a few years ago, I don't have great vision. And I noticed when I turned 40, you're supposed to say you look 16. Well, so when I turned 40, I might be all a of little... a sudden, I couldn't read. And I was like, okay, I started at my little readers, and all of a sudden I graduated to three. And I was like, ooh, that's concerning. Where but you didn't go? wear no glasses before the readers, correct? Perfect. In fact, yes. when I was growing up, I wanted bad eyes because I thought the glasses were so cute. It was like a fashion statement. And I would literally, I will skip dentist appointments. I will skip anything. But eye doctor appointments, I went to all of them hoping. And every time it was like 2020 vision. Right. So what, what Nikki is describing is called farsightedness. So somebody who's farsighted doesn't need any glasses until around 40-ish. It's age related, right? It's age related. And what happens is the lens inside the eye really loses its ability to focus. So you start going, whoa, having trouble, got to make the fonts bigger on my cell phone, all of that. During the pandemic, I was driving on the freeway at night. I was like, oh my God my distance is going there we go. out too. So all of a sudden, it began the journey of readers, progressives, yep. monovision contact. I mean, my bag of eye stuff on a trip and a massive magnifying mirror to put the contact lens. There you go. So that's the farsighted story. Life starts out really great, but then it just deteriorates and the, the prescription starts going up, right? Plus one, then 150, then so 175, like then two. Year, Every year. So then, a couple of years ago, randomly, I bumped into some people and they were about my age, early 50s. And the woman said, I just had this procedure, which you would be a candidate for. It's basically cataracts before you have cataracts. There you go. I said to my eye doctor, I want to get this surgery. He's like, you're not a candidate. I now know why I wasn't a candidate because all of a sudden I don't need an eye doctor anymore. I just have you right. and perfect eyes. So we went we went through a whole lot there, but Nikki hit on some key points. So what the refractive lens exchange is, we replace the natural lens of the eye with an implant that lasts for the rest of your life and gives you pretty much a full range of vision from cell phone all the way out to the distance without glasses. All right, so Nikki, just for the folks, um, just to kind of explain the difference between LASIK and RLE, because that's kind of a question, right? People come in, they think everything's LASIK is the cure-all. It's a great procedure for the right people, but, but not once we get past about 45. So LASIK is working on the window on the front of the eye, which is the cornea, the structure right here. And if you have LASIK done, that stays the same the rest of your life, okay? What doesn't stay the same the rest of your life is the lens, which is here. If somebody comes in and they are 50 years old, first of all, their lens doesn't focus very well, but it also is starting to get a little bit cloudy like that, okay? And so people develop cataract. Cataract is not a disease, it's part of the aging process. Everybody gets this. So if somebody comes in, they're 50, 55 years old, and they say they want LASIK, I have to say to them, it's not the right procedure. So what we want to do is we want to replace this kind of cloudy aging lens. I, I say, you know, your lens has outlived its useful life. It's kind of how we say that. So we're going to replace that with a lens that's perfectly clear. It actually looks like this. This is called the Odyssey lens. Okay, this is a lens implant that replaces your natural lens. And this lens stays the same the rest of your life. So if I intervene, when the lens looks like that, you will never go through this process of getting a bad cataract. So that's the concept. And you see, if I do LASIK, it, it doesn't do anything. The lens is still gonna get worse. So that, that's really the difference and why, when we get to a certain age, it makes sense to address the lens issues. Oh, one more point, and if you look at this lens, you'll see the rings on there. So what happens right after we do the surgery, what you will notice at night is you're gonna see these kind of halos around lights at night. And I, I sometimes I, I kind of joke with the patients, so I say, you're absolutely gonna see those, and when you see those, you know the lens is working. Yeah, Because they're also, on the lens. Yeah. But, but to be honest with you, because my eyes were so bad, I had weird stuff at night anyway, so it wasn't that dramatic where it bothered me. It was pretty minimal. Right, and what happens over time, because our brain is an amazing computer, right? And it adapts, it adapts to things. So this is always gonna be there. And after a while, your brain goes, 
Huh? I don't really care so much. They become less obvious. That's where I am. And it was, it didn't take long for that to happen. Absolutely. And that's one of the reasons I really like the Odyssey lens. In the, in the clinical trial, when they looked at this lens, they asked all the patients at one month, are you still noticing bothered by the halos? 3% of patients said yes at one month. So 97% of patients really start to ignore these pretty quickly. Thanks for your time. Thank you for doing my so glad. Are you kidding me? Uh, my pleasure. This is my pleasure to sit here. We, uh, we look forward to seeing you at Hamilton Eye Institute to see- Don't help hesitate, you. sign up. <laughs>